Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. How you doing? Welcome to the Huddle with Israel Doctrine. I'm your host, Carl Albert, and you have now entered into the huddle. And today, today's show is entitled, When Did Scholarship Become a Part of the Fivefold Ministry? Right? Anybody that know anything about the Word of God and the New Testament and uh, the setting up of the, the church and the administration of the church, the question is, when did scholarship become a part of the fivefold ministry? Seeing today, you know, a lot of people have been dealing with the so-called conscious community and everything in the paradigm that they set to, um, you know, entangle and trap us in, you know, their paradigm. The question that came to my mind today, talking with a brother and everything, when did scholarship become a part of the fivefold ministry, right? So we go to Ephesians 4 to find a conversation that we're talking about fivefold ministry, and we'll just lay it out right quick. It said 11 and 13, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So people, it's the teacher, the scholar, it's the pastor, the scholar, it's the evangelist, the scholar, it's the prophet, the scholar, or it's the apostle, the scholar. In holding any titles, do you have to be a scholar? It's pretty much the question that I'm asking, right? Or do you need to know the word of God and let it shine forth in what you would call today's scholarship, right? Because most people act like it's no such thing as a biblical scholar. And what would be a biblical scholar in the scholarly realm and scholarly world, right? That's understanding historical aspects of the Bible. That's understanding languages and stuff, things to do with, you know, that. That's understanding um, geography and stuff. A lot of those things, a lot of those things came very easy to those that was... uh, in that generation at that time in which the Bible was being produced, right? So did they have to be, quote unquote, as we want to be or claim to be today scholars? Or did they just talk about those things that was a uh, simple, simply tradition in their culture, in their land? This is the question that I'm uh Presenting the day. This is this is what I'm presenting the day, people. Simple as that. Did they have to go study land and this and that? Did they have to go study things of this nature, or did they just have to, you know, simply speak on the matters that was going on in their locale, with the tongues they spoke, the many different multi languages they spoke things of this nature. We call this scholarship today. This is where you find the Masonic uh, paradigm coming in play and people want to deal with the liberal arts and things of that nature. And say, if you're not in tune with the liberal arts, then you're not a, you're not a well-groomed person, you know? So I put the question out there. I put the conversation out there. Really looking for some feedback from the huddle. And as y'all know, I don't make up the huddle. I just, I'm just a part of the huddle. 
in all actuality, you all make up the huddle. So if you're out there and you're listening and you have something you can add to the conversation or would like to add to the conversation, then please do take the time, call in. The call-in number is Call-in number 646-668-8071. You know, I say I believe it's a good question, good good conversation today. How many people will uh, tune in and participate in the conversation? I don't know. I don't know, but if you want to chime in, and take part of the dialogue. Once again, the phone number is 646-668-8071. And if you out there on YouTube land and you want to talk or chat, call in. If you're on Blog Talk Radio and you're listening and you would like to watch it, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Israel Doctrine. So, Let's pursue some more of this text dealing with the matter. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12 and 28. And God has set, set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondly, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. And that miracles. Then gifts of healing, health, government, diversity, diversities of tongues. So you see... This is what God set forth for the edifying of the church, the body of Christ, till we all come together in unity of the faith and of the knowledge of his son, Jesus, right? To bring the perfect man about. This is why when you read something like Ecclesiastes 12 and 9, if I can get to it. Ecclesiastes 12 and 9, it'll tell you the proper manner in which a preacher, a preacher and a teacher is pretty much the same thing. Now, apostles, prophets, and evangelists, that's another show, another time to get in great detail. But Ecclesiastes 12 and picking it up at 9, it said, moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave... He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs because we know the Bible was written with uh, many different literary styles. And most of them are figures of speech. You know, the whole Ken Kabuta of figures of speech that you have, the, the different types. And it said, the preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright even words of truth. And this day, in time, people try to get into the scholarly realm and read a lot of commentary on how the Bible came about, things of that nature. You know, my question once again is, with the people in that day and time, you know, the audience of that day and time have argued about where the Bible came from. They would have knew if a Peter wrote a epistle. They would have knew if Paul, Paul wrote a epistle. They would have knew you know, how the original primary documentation most definitely that makes up the New Testament came about. So what they had to be, once again, scholars. When did scholarship become a part of the fivefold ministry? I would like for the scholarly mind to explain to me how scholarship has anything to do with the Bible in the sense of the word that people use this term today. And they tell you you're pseudo if you're not dealing with scholarship or you're, you're, uh, you're evangelizing, you're dealing with prophecy, your discipleship or your teaching and preaching is in vain, it's pseudo because it doesn't fit in the quote unquote scholarly realm that most people try to push the word of God into the day. 
and you find these same people telling those that say they deal with the Bible and stuff, you know, if you believe your Bible have all the answers, then why don't you stay in your book? You know what I'm saying? Why don't you stay in your book? Now, this is something that I do. I don't um, I don't go too much outside of the Bible itself because I believe the Bible holds all the answers to all the questions that uh, asked about that text itself. You know what I'm saying? I believe the Bible holds all the answers about the text itself, this literary text itself called the Bible, Biblos, binding, abundant of books. Most people, they're very doubtful when it comes to that. You know, they get in, in conversation and they want to read what the um, predominant scholars have to say about it. They want to read commentary books about it and stuff. I just want to read the scriptures. You know, because I believe they are the uh, foundation that one who said they believe should be building their faith up off of. You say you believe in a text, then everything you say should be verbatim or, or, or read out of the text. This is letting the Bible speak for itself. You know, because you'll find people saying the Bible say, and then they'll start telling you what the Bible say. Instead of giving you the chapter and verse and reading it to it, which is more of a scholarly type methodology in itself, giving you the references from which they're quoting from. So in that sense of the word, I guess you could say scholarship do have something to do with the Bible. I don't know. I got two callers here, a 202 and a 504. If y'all want to speak, hit one. We got basically uh, 30 minutes on the air. We also uh, simultaneously broadcasting on YouTube. Y'all can see my ugly mug if you want to. But uh, if you want overtime or whatever and talk with me, if you uh, hit me in my inbox at facebook.com, facebook.com slash Israel Doctrine, you hit me in my inbox, I'll send you um, the link to the overtime, which we can do on YouTube, but we now got three callers, or four, two, five. So we asking the question here today, callers, when did scholarship become a part of the five-fold ministry? Four, two, five, your mic's open. How you doing? Hey, what's up, Carl? This is James. How you doing? What's up? What's up, bro? Not much, not much. I, was, I just wanted to put an input that it became important to the five-fold ministry once we had people outside of the Hebrews translating our documents because the Bible tells us to study to show ourselves to prove, which means we also need to study how these translations came about, who exactly did the translation, the purpose behind them doing the translation, so we can have a better understanding because no matter how you look at it, at this point in time, we can in no wise, unless we study, know that these are the exact words that our forefathers was giving us. Well, okay. I mean, I hear you. I hear your point. I hear your argument. You know, I'm one to disagree with that to the degree that I believe God preserved his word in the KJV. I don't too much deal with nothing else, but uh, in reading and dealing with what's being conveyed in the KJV and sometimes comparing it to, you know, as you say, the Hebrew and things of that nature, which most people that want to be scholarly do, you know, and looking at what's being conveyed, I don't see any lack in that which is in the KJV. Which, to an, to an extent, I completely agree with you, due to the fact that if anyone took the time to actually study it and understand it and not be taught it by, you know, others, but study it for themselves and really understand the deep things of it, yes, you won't have an issue differentiating. But when you're dealing with people who 
like to listen rather than study and go based off what other people present and tell them how to read the book, then you have those issues. Like a brother like you would see something where it says the Lord does not repent. And then where it comes again and says the Lord repented, you would clearly understand that this is not what's being conveyed because you study the Bible. But to others who are more, as you were stating, scholarly about it, which I think is a rather rather loose way of using scholarly, but about it, they would read it for what it is in the English and not understand that the thought behind it is different, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying, and and that's where, like you say, studying it, studying in it comes to play. I mean, it's a it's a form of literature, and in dealing with literature, the more you read the literature, and the more you read the writings of certain writings. Like if you stay in the Book of Paul and read all his epistles, all Paul epistles, you will learn his writing style and his uh, way of conveying the deep message that he has to do his best, you know. And when you read in the Old Testament, you read certain books. If they're not outside of just the historical aspect, then you can understand the psalmist and the Proverbs and stuff. The more you read them and the more you get in tune with their writing styles. Hello? Yes, sir. You, no, you can go ahead and talk. I, I got a phone call, and I was answering Nick. Hello? Oh, okay. Well, like I said, yes, you're, you're absolutely correct. Those who actually take the time to study should be able to look through these things. But, you know, everyone doesn't have that type of mind as well. You know, they haven't been they haven't been blessed in order to be able to extract the true meanings behind things. They take it for what they are. And that's what brought along what we modernly call scholarship. Now, if we want to deal with our forefathers while they were in the land of Israel, they also were scholars to a degree. A scribe is an ancient scholar. He's not just, you know, someone who writes things down. He's a scholar. He studies the writing. He studies the ancient writings. When the prophets would prophesy something, the scribe would be responsible for going back into the ancient writing and seeing what the other prophets said according to that, to know whether that was something that's truly from the Lord or not, whether it's an old prophecy that's coming around or if it's a new prophecy that's coming up as well. So the scribes now, were ancient scholars. You see what I'm saying? Even the Levites, because they had to be scholars at the law. You see what I'm saying? Well, what did what did you obtain this information and in how are you use the scholarly, like you saying, we're throwing the word around, but how are you using the the term scholar, scholarly? Well, uh, a scholar is something. Uh huh. A scholar is someone who. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, all right. A scholar is someone who studies something. You become a scholar in the area in which you study. You see what I'm saying? That's what. That's what. Uh, a typical scholar is someone who studies it, you know, and to put it in layman's terms, someone who studies a certain era, like you can be a scholar in history, you can be a scholar in biology, you can be a scholar in anything you study. So a Levite would be a scholar in a law, you know, a scribe would be a scholar in the writings of the prophets, you know, and so on and so forth. Anybody who would study the law would be as Pharisees were scholars. Now, some, some of their scholars went by or, more oral tradition than the law that was given to Moses, but they were still scholars in both the law and the oral tradition. So, in, in, in saying this, and we're looking at the fivefold ministry, then um, when it say evangelists, prophets, and so on and so forth, teachers, preachers, you know, apostles, prophets, evangelists, preachers and teachers, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. In the in, in the sense of, of the word scholarship, as you uh, just explained it, how would you break down those uh, five positions and what type of scholarship would uh, be 
attached to each one of those. We can start with apostle first. What would an apostle pretty much have to be scholarly in, you would say? Well, as an apostle, which um, they would have to be scholarly in the law. They would have to be, well, pretty much they would have to be scholarly in the Bible itself, in the Tanakh. They would have had to be scholars because during that time, as we all know, the New Testament was not yet written. It may have been some epistles written at that time, but the New Testament itself wasn't written yet. So yeah, you had it had was. to have been scholars in the, in the Tanakh, the Law and the Prophets, in order to you know convey these truths to others. Okay, what about prophet now? The the same applies to a prophet because most prophets re prophet. Well, it's not many prophets who come with new prophets. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Let, let's just say across the board, they will have to be um, a student in the, of the, in yeah. the biblical text, in the mm -hmm. Torah, Tanakh, Psalms, or the, you know, those writings, whatever they really call, poetic writings, and so on and so forth. So, anybody else out there, we got a couple more callers. We got a couple more callers. Because, uh, as I said, most people know due to the fact that, you know, the conscious community and certain individuals in it and through this word scholarship around, we uh, we got people want to be more scholarly than dealing with Bible teachings or, or the doctrine itself that the Bible put forth. So people get into the historical aspect of how the Bible came about more than what the Bible say. People get in the aspect of, you know, the uh, the language in which the Bible comes from instead of dealing with the Bible as written in the English language. They, they tend to want to study Hebrew, learn Hebrew, and then feel that that is the way you learn more insight on the Word of God. When I believe the doctrine and the teaching of itself is that the book is sealed to those learned and unlearned, and only those that God initiate or give, give his spirit to unlock it can truly unlock it, no matter if you're dumb, deaf, and blind, or you, you know, got sight and great ears and and uh, so on and so forth, the opposite of dumb, deaf, and blind. Deaf men can't which, which speak like so hard. Like I was saying earlier, so if you're talking about getting salvation, then, of course, um, the English is good enough to get someone's salvation. It conveys the law that we must obey, and it conveys the truths of Christ. That's no issue. But for those who want to have deeper understanding of the entire Bible, it is, without a doubt, better to learn it in its native tongue because of the way it conveys in its native tongue is different because, as we know, Hebrew is a concrete language while English is an abstract language. With something being a concrete language, it conveys differently when you translate it over into an abstract language. Like being blessed. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Like like for us to say, oh, you're blessed. Most people who speak English think of something that's coming straight from God, this heavenly thing of being blessed. But when you read it in the Hebrew, it means to bend the knee or to and, and to present something to someone as a blessing. That, that's just like if I was to give you a pencil, I blessed you with a pencil. That's what it conveys in the Hebrew. But in the English, then with the English mind, it conveys something that's coming down from the heavens from God himself, or it's something that God has made come together for a person. Well, I wouldn't say that because I basically deal with only the English mind frame, and I wouldn't see that. If I receive a blessing, that means something has been presented to me or come unto me from somewhere, and it doesn't mean God. If you bless me with it, then No, I understand that, Carl. That's what I'm saying. I so, understand where you come from because you understand it. Like, that's what I'm saying. You understand it, but we're talking but about what the typical person. That way, they only see it that way because somebody told them that's how it works. So, therefore, uh, now exactly. when, they read, when they deal with it, that's the way they've been trained to look at it or perceive it. 
Exactly, and that's what and that's what I'm saying. If they would have first been introduced to it from a Hebraic standpoint, and someone taught it from that, they would have gotten it right off the bat. While people like us studied deeper into the English and really broke down the Bible to understand what it's conveying. And like what you were saying right. earlier, that's um, why it says teachers and pastors, and more than saying they're giving it to you in a scholarship fashion as the Ecclesiastes 12, 9, and 10 say, mm-hmm. you teach them knowledge. You teach them how to go into the scriptures and to understand what's being conveyed. And sometimes, mm-hmm. I guess Hebrew could help, you know, explain some th- things, or Greek can help explain some things, but the uh, methodology of the hermeneutics in which the Bible works in it tells you basically the law and the testimony so you can get two witnesses from the old and the new, one from the old, one from the new, here a little, there a little, and you got to build your premises based up on the conversation that's conveyed from Genesis to Revelation by his, you know, absolutely. his servant. You know? Mm-hmm. That's, that's absolutely correct. But again, we're talking about presenting information to others who don't understand that yet. You see what I'm saying? That that's the basis because we have to understand that the the body has many parts. As the scriptures tell us, the body has many parts. And it's uh, and the reason it has many parts is because each part can reach another person a different way. We have some people who have historical mindsets and historical things draw them in. But they've been told this whole time that they've been living, well, the Bible's not a historical book. So we have brothers that decide to dig into the history to reach those people. We have people yeah, who Yeah, and that's are, what I was saying before you, before you called uh-huh. in, that, uh, you know, if we really dealt with the time frame and the localities, people, they knew their terrain. They knew the mm-hmm. languages. Most, most of them was multilingual. And this thing, then it would have been a day-to-day thing, it wouldn't have been, oh, you need a certain type of scholarship to present or convey to the people now, because you know the locale, you know the history, you know these things, because that's what they taught on the Sabbath day. They taught the history of Israel. They taught the laws. They taught, you Mm -hmm. know, these things that was uh, needed for the culture, for the people that lived in the culture. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah, so I, it would have been I completely a day. Oh, go ahead. Right now. Yeah, it would have been a day to day right now. Most of us lack those things because we don't live in a culture where people practice most of the things that the Bible present. We we don't even live in a agricultural environment where we can even practice letting the land rest and feeding the animals and things of that nature. So, you know, not living in that type of culture or that environment, then scholarship comes in, I guess. Exactly. That that's kind of my point. that's kind of my point when I I say why it's necessary because if you don't understand the geography of the biblical land, you can't understand the history of the battles that are taking place and what they're pointing out. You can't understand the journey that they took through, you know, the wilderness to get to Israel. There's a lot of things that, you know, that are important to the text. And, okay, you know, okay. different people, you know what I'm saying, they they reach out for different things. And, you know, it's just another way to draw them in so they can get to the point where they can accept the fivefold ministry. You know what I mean? Everything ain't going to be easy. Remember, Paul was in was in the synagogue preaching from sun up to sun down Christ because, you know, people just wasn't going to get it. Some people don't take it this way, so you have to present it to them another way, you know. We're supposed to do everything within our power to reach as many people as we can reach, especially those of our brethren. Yeah, I really, you know, I really uh, don't care too much about scholarship, but I mess with it myself because when uh, the demand is like, bring it to me like that, and if that's the people you got to reach, then the methodology that's needed, you got to you gotta use it. So uh, yeah, let me say is. this, people. We- we're going to go into overtime. We're going to go into overtime, and it will basically be me. I know Brother James. I can send him a link, and he can come over there. But uh, we got 15 minutes now, but I'm on a phone call, and if the phone drops, 
then the show is going to be over. Or if you fall off, it's, it's going to be over. But go ahead, uh, 765. How you doing, sister? Um, peace, brother Carl. How are you? I caught the sh- I, I uh, caught it a little late. You about to end the show, you say, right? It's going off for 15 minutes. I'm, you know, I'm not in control of it. Right, but will you be over on YouTube? Yeah, I'll be on YouTube, and uh, this brother, I, I know I can send him the link where he can come over and we can still discuss it if if we want to or need to, you know. Oh, okay. All right, then. Um, it's, you know, it's good to hear the, the huddle back up and, and being broadcast and, you know, and having us to be blessed with the opportunity to together, you know, in the name of God and, and share, you know, the word and, the edification of the word and being blessed with it. So I'm I'm grateful to God for that and I thank you, uh, Brother Carl as well. Uh it's all good. I know people uh miss calling in and stuff. Everybody need a place to go sometime and uh been a ear or whatever, so I'm glad to be back and have the phone lines uh somewhat open right now. Be better it'll be better when them two hours uh get back and we can really sit down and talk for more more than the time frame that we have now. But uh oh, yeah. I'm gonna wait for them two hours. It's probably gonna be Monday. And um you know, I'll probably even try to open up a thirty minute show in the afternoon with the huddle too. And um uh, try to do more. Since I got time on my hand, you know, I wanna do more. And, and present more stuff where people will have a place like this to go instead of going to some of them places that uh, don't provide certain, you know, things for the community. But uh, we talking scholarship here. What you know about scholarship? Well, you know what? To be honest with you, uh, I was going to ask you what was this scholarship be, be, uh, regarding this fivefold ministry. Well, you probably would got to, you probably have to go back and listen to some of the conversation we was having. But um it's it's you know and most people know that uh with uh the conscious community dealing with uh the different um cultures and people that's in there from the Nile Valley to the Moors to the um Nation of Islam to Nubian and all these different, you know, fashions, R B G and you know, things of that nature, you know, scholarship has been brought to the forefront. And, uh, you know, ever since I've been dealing with those people, I've been asking them what they know about biblical scholarship. Is it a such thing as biblical scholarship and what all falls up under the headline and title, title of biblical scholarship? So I'm talking with this brother here, James, and we just going over some stuff. And, you know, I'm asking him some questions to see how he perceives scholarship you know, in dealing with the fivefold ministry, you know, if it's a part of the fivefold or whatever, you know, trying to explore well, the with the, scholarship, with the scholarship consist of the knowledge that's there that's written in the book and how much understanding you have of it? Well, that's where I lean more than anything, but it, it can be outside of those lines. You can't just keep it in a box. You know, it okay. is outside of those lines. Uh, I'm not the one to travel too far out those lines because I also in Ecclesiastes 12, it said, uh, verse 12 and further, by thee, by thee, thee this, uh, however, my son, by admonishing and making many books, there is no end and much study is a weary of the flesh. So mm-hmm. study to show yourself approved is a part of what we have to do. Paul uh, pushed that. And um, all scripture is good for reproof and rebuke and correction, you know, things of that nature. And that which is written is upright, even words of truth. But sometimes you have to, um, you do have to journey outside of the Bible. You got a brother out there, European guy, um, by the name of David Rose. He uh, did Patterns of Evidence, uh pharaohs and kings and things of that nature and he's trying to show through archaeology and stuff that uh israel existed because a lot of people said they didn't even exist in the bible or they'll go to the to the term that 
those people was called by before they was called Israelites, which is uh, Hebrews. So people try to go in history and, you know, finding these different patterns of evidence to prove that they even exist, which I guess that's a part of the scholarship world, the historical and things of that. But me, myself, whether they existed or not, the book is still conveying a certain type of message. And mm-hmm. it's just a fictional if this a fictional household of people, a genealogy of people, it's still the greatest story in the world. So, I mean, just dealing it, dealing from a literary aspect, you know, you can't diss the book unless you're not a fan of literature. But James, well, if you I'm, got something to say, go ahead, uh, go ahead, yeah. brother. Oh, no, nah, um, Carl, I think you pretty much wrapped that up pretty nicely. I mean, um, the only thing I see is that the Bible is always the guideline and the tool to steer us in any direction we wish to go. Like me, I, I like history. I like archaeology. And I use the Bible as my template to look through history and find the things that support the Bible. And that that's the way the Bible is supposed to be used in any aspect of our lives. I mean, just general living day to day. We go to those laws and we live within the guidelines of those laws. And that's a firm foundation for us to live our lives according to the will of the Most High. And that's just the way I see it. Yeah, because, uh, as I said, people call it mythology. If it's a myth. If it's mythology, it's the greatest mythology I'd have never read. You know, whatever you want to label it as, I take the I take the hit on the chin, but I'm still gonna show and tell and prove how I see it to be better than any other literature out there. You know, it's just me. So, but uh, it's probably gonna cut us off in a little bit. We probably got really seven more minutes, but go ahead, whoever want to speak. Uh, anybody else out there? I see. I still got two two more callers that hadn't hit the uh, the one. But if you want to say something, hit one. For those that's on uh, YouTube, what y'all listening to right now is the huddle. It's not in a title, but the huddle is the blog talk radio show that we do daily between uh, four and six. Now we might start at four, or we might start at four thirty. But anywhere it go. You can look for the um, you can look for the posting of it if you uh, get your blog talk channel and subscribe to my channel. You don't have to participate in making shows and stuff, but you can uh, listen to these shows and a variety of shows out there. You know that's what blog talk is about. And uh, if you're on YouTube, just subscribe to the channel. And when we uh, broadcast for for four thirty Central Standard Time you'll be able to see that we're on live and we're broadcasting. Um, right now we're doing 45-minute shows. Pretty soon we'll be back to the two-hour shows. We deal with a plethora of topics here. We deal with all different type of cultures and things here, but the Bible is the mainstay that we deal with here. And um, the Bible is Israel Doctrine. Israel's, I should say, put that S on there and let you know, Israel's Doctrine. And if you know who Israel is, then you understand who doctrine it is. And you probably would understand the protocol at the same time of how this doctrine, which is known as the Bible, is dispensed to all the world. And it's very not to many people even in a hotel room when you're doing the boom boom. So Commitment, adultery, and fornication in the book right there. If you pick it up, it'll probably convict you for doing so. But uh, with that said, I pretty much uh, call it a day. I don't want it to rudely hang up on y'all, so I say peace. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll probably do a show or something tonight, talking to the brothers or the sisters who ever want to come on and uh, do a hangout. Not a blog talk show, but just a hangout on YouTube. Uh, it's been a lot of matters within the community going on that need to be spoke about, talked about, looked at, and uh, contemplated. So, you know, God willing, 
Oh, right, brother. Five eight six. Your mic's open. Hey, good evening, everybody online. Is it Doc? You said you going over to the huddle? No, no. Nah, nah, I was saying that, you know, later on the night I'll probably do another show on uh, YouTube. At what time? I don't know. Whenever the okay, spirit hit me up. Okay, hit me up then on Facebook. Okay, I inbox you. I see you subscribe to the channel too, so you know, even if yeah, you don't I'm catch it, it'll, 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 yeah, it'll let you know that uh, I did a did a show or whatever. I need a flash water too. Yeah, I know y'all see it. Hey, how you doing, sister? That's good to hear your voice. Hey, sister. Thank you. Same to you. Yes, and all the other about nine. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll be looking for you later on then. Okay, two oh two. Your mic's open. Hey, what's going peace on, you- Carl? Just call. Just called to say, you know, grace and peace to you. Shalom to the brother James and uh, hello to the to the women on the line as well. Yeah, I was just listening in, Carl. Uh, some interesting topics that have uh, come up lately. Uh, ha- I haven't had a chance to catch your last video. I saw you did something dealing with. Uh, Christianity and kind of responding off of uh, the sit down that yeah. the uh, New Testament and Old Testament Hebrews had at Zion Lexus Temple. Yeah, I just let them know that true Christians wouldn't wouldn't uh, compromise as much as those brothers compromise. I believe they compromise some to make sure the Hebrew Israelite movement uh, stay going forward, but it's really not going to go forward until people really sit down and deal with this war that's sitting in between us, you know. This, right, this, right. This rock of offense or stumbling or however you want to look look at it, that rock or our rock is it's a must. We must deal with it. So, you know, me, LeBron, okay. and Kevin G was talking last night, just reading some scriptures. Yeah, I saw that. I'm going to... uh. I'm going to try and catch that video a little bit later tonight. All right, well, I just wanted to let you know that uh, my ears were open. I was tuned in. If you do touch on a couple subjects later, just uh, let me know. So, uh, Carl, James, and to the women on the line, you guys have a blessed night. Be blessed Thank you, you brother. brother. Thank you. All right, with that said, I'm going to say peace, y'all, and uh, I'll talk with you tomorrow at 4 o'clock or 4.30, whichever one feel more appropriate to do. All right, brother. Peace to you. Thank you. Peace.